Hello, YouTube. Few people have heard about the hot subterranean ocean hidden in the depths of the West Siberian plain. This mysterious and undeveloped energy source is capable of replacing Siberian oil and gas in the future and is a source of water, global in its nature. However, like many global natural phenomena, the underground ocean can pose a threat. Colossal reserves of groundwater were discovered in western Siberia in the 1950s. Russian oilmen drilling wells in search of black gold often stumbled upon fountains of hot water instead of oil. Well, in the literature describing this discovery, there was a bifurcation of terms. Serious geologists preferred to talk about the unnaturally large West Siberian artesian basin, which is called the largest on the planet. But popular science sources have created the image of a grandiose, hot, underground ocean. Soviet journalist Igor Adabashev, who published the book The Subterranean Ocean in 1962, tried especially hard. The biography of this author, who was not only a popular popularizer of science, but also a science fiction writer, is characteristic. Descriptions of the hot ocean got into all sorts of collections of entertaining facts and children's encyclopedias. Siberia is known to be one of the coldest places in the world. Therefore, Soviet authors of the 1960s gave readers hope that the underground body mastered by industry would turn the harsh region into a paradise on Earth. Well, like many ideas of the socialist utopia, they failed. In recent years, the topic of Siberian groundwater has sometimes been mixed with information about another subterranean ocean. Huge reserves of water that are hidden in the layers of the Earth mantle they are much deeper than the artesian waters, at a depth of several hundred kilometers. It is believed that the amount of water in the mantle is comparable to the current volume of the world ocean. However, unlike the Siberian underground or subterranean ocean, this water is petrified. It exists only in the composition of minerals. In the lower layer of the mantle, with a depth of 500 to 650 kilometers, scientists have discovered huge reserves of water. The volume of underground space is three times the volume of the world ocean. But the water there is unusual. It is located inside the ringwoodite, a mineral about the existence of which there have been scientific disputes for a long time. In nature, of course, no one has encountered it. But American scientists managed to obtain this mineral in laboratory conditions. According to research, ring woodite may contain water. Moreover, the water in it is not liquid. It is not gas or ice. The water in ring woodite is a, in a special form of hydroxide ions. There really are underground oceans inside our planet that can come to the surface. These seas are very ancient. They're 2.7 billion years old. Well, in fact, groundwater reserves are not uncommon in Russia. They're common in both the European and Asian parts of the country. However, the scale of the West Siberian basin is impressive. It occupies 3 million square kilometers. Starting under the bottom of the Kara Sea, the basin covers the entire West Siberian plain. By area, it is larger than the Mediterranean Sea. The volume of water is estimated at 65,000 cubic kilometers, which is almost three times more than in Lake Baikal. Artesian waters, this is what we're talking about when we speak about the subterranean ocean, West Siberia, lie at depths of several dozens of meters and an average from one and a half to three kilometers. They are concentrated in the cavities in the, of the sedimentary rocks soaked with water like a sponge. The pool consists of two hydro 
geological floors. The upper floor is occupied, I should say the basin, this is the better word. The upper floor is occupied by deposits that arose during the Oligocene epoch 33 million years ago and later. But the lower floor is the same age as the dinosaurs in the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. Four aquifer complexes were formed, separated by partitions. The southern border of the subterranean ocean stretches from Krasnoyarsk to Semei to Kostanai in northern Kazakhstan. The temperature of the groundwater here is only plus 5 to 10 degrees, but in the more northern areas, the ocean is getting hotter. In some places, the underground water is a real boiling water, up to 125, 150 degrees and even higher. At the bottom of the Jurassic sediments, in the most submerged parts of the basin, superheated thermal waters with a temperature of about 200 degrees Celsius can occur, according to Dmitry Novikov, head of the Laboratory of Hydrogeology of Sedimentary Basins of Siberia. The water is heated by Earth's hot mantle. A good example is the Malinovsky Geothermal Spring near the town of Kalpashava in the Tomsk region on the banks of the Chaya River. Hot water gushes from an abandoned well drilled in 1954 by Soviet oilmen. To this day, it is curious that in the north of Siberia, there is a layer of permafrost between hot water and the Earth's surface. If you burn all the coal, all the oil, and all the gas on the planet, if you curb all the wind, all the rivers, you still won't be able to get as much energy as it is hidden in the underground, the subterranean Siberian Ocean. Moreover, the sources that feed the ocean with the life-giving power are almost eternal. As long as the sun exists, as long as the water makes its great, greatest cycle, giving life to nature, until then, the source, the spring of movement, will pulsate. Eternal is life. Eternal is the source of energy. It is hidden in the thickness of the West Siberian marshes. It undeservedly, forlornly, stands aside from the interests of the Russian national economy for the time being. The name is water, the most ordinary, only warmed up to a temperature of 100 to 150 degrees. And water is going to be the most precious commodity on our planet quite soon. If it were possible to massively drill wells to a depth of three kilometers, it would solve a lot of economic problems. In the USSR Academy of Sciences, plans were developed for heating 60 large cities with hot groundwater. But projects for the development of alternative energy required huge infrastructure costs, and the planned socialist economy did not get around to them, as they say. Now, the development of the resources um, of the subterranean ocean is episodic. In the early 2000s, for example, a geothermal station was opened in the Omsk region in the village of Chistova. Although the maximum water temperature here is only 52 degrees, and in 2022, an Eastern Orthodox church with geothermal heating was built in Tobolsk. No one can actually predict what consequences the use of geothermal waters of Siberia will lead to. According to some estimates, their energy potential is comparable to the energy of all hydrocarbons on the planet. Some authors, scientists, fear that a broken ocean of boiling water may flood the Earth, causing a new worldwide flood. Such a scenario can be triggered, for example, by a global seismic event. But while the underground ocean has not been sufficiently studied, and technologies are not fully involved, it is still premature to talk about the danger of its economic development. Rather, one can complain that mankind is ready at any moment to unleash a global war for resources instead of investing in the development of a conditionally inexhaustible source of energy. And in this regard, Russia 
which has such wealth as the West Siberian Artesian Basin and its territory, has an advantage over other countries. However, it cannot be ruled out that the Siberian Ocean of boiling water can become a reason for future military conflicts. When oil explorers received hot water from drilled wells in the 1950s, no one was happy about this water. We needed oil, oil, and only oil in the USSR. None of the scientists could have imagined that water could be more valuable than oil and gas. Every morning and evening we wash, drink, water the flowers, use it for everything, factories, plants, hydroelectric power plants, ships, cars, drink a huge amount of water every day. And look how hot it is getting around the world, especially this summer of 2023. Water is becoming the most precious commodity. The depths of the hot subterranean ocean are still poorly measured. In any case, the underground basin is not shallow. Its average depth is 3,000 meters. Upon further study, it may turn out that its volume is five times larger than the Mediterranean and maybe 25 times. In this ocean, water does not splash. It occupies the voids of sedimentary rocks. The ocean is a sponge, and the sponge is not simple, but layered like a pie. Well, this underground of subterranean ocean has an estimated area of approximately 3 million square kilometers. The Barents, Caspian, and the three black sea, seas, if you count together, could be freely located on this territory. According to scientists, the underground ocean holds over 65,000 cubic kilometers of water. Another feature, unlike ordinary, so to speak, terrestrial oceans, the water in this underground subterranean ocean is fresh. The underground basin contains almost inexhaustible reserves of water. If we receive, if we get 2.5 million cubic meters daily, then in a hundred years, it would be equal to only 1% of the water of the entire underground subterranean sea. There are many more water reservoirs hidden in the depths of the earth, but the underground subterranean ocean in Western Siberia is the largest, and it might contain unimaginable life forms in its waters. And it might attract attention of those who lurk, who <coughs> are encountered in the seas and oceans of our planet who are much faster than our submarines. I have dedicated with Philip Mantel, my co-author, an entire book to the Russian encounters with unidentified submersible objects. Many of them took place in the regions I described in this video, the Barents Sea and so forth. I will bring you more interesting stories about Eurasia in general and uh, Russia in particular, especially Far East, Siberia, and beyond it, of course, <clears throat> the Arctic Ocean. So if you like my research, please support me through the links you'll find in the description to this video. Please tell others about my channel and uh, think about water. And please like my videos. Thank you.